So today I wanted to talk to you about potatoes and showing you. So today I wanted to talk to you about planting potatoes. It is late April here, um, sort of three or four weeks from our last frost date. And I'm just beginning the process of getting our potatoes into the ground. Now, we're not actually big potato eaters. We eat maybe something once a week. I think some of the kids would eat more. Um, some less. I'm not, Kevin and I aren't huge potato fans. So, you know, we definitely like to have them and we definitely like to grow them, but we are not aiming for lots and, you know, kilos and kilos of potatoes every year. And also the kind of potatoes we like are influenced by what kind of events we're running and what we sort of plan to be doing this year. Um, and so, and, and those different choices really affect how, where we're planting our potatoes, how we're planting them, and what kinds we're gonna be growing this year. Um, we tend to focus a lot on salad potatoes for events, and we plant those, it tends to be in pots, and I'll show you that. Um, as well as some heritage varieties that do particularly well in our soil and climate. Now, because of our very shallow topsoil that I talk about loads and all of the rock that is sitting under this farm, um, we have to almost exclusively plant our potatoes in raised beds. We also won't be able to get the sort of depth on our potato beds, even with that, without some sort of structure around them. And that's why we tend to grow them in containers, in whiskey barrels and things like that. We also won't get the sort of yields that a lot of places will get where they have really deep soil that they can furrow, um, just because that's just the way it is. Next up, I wanna talk about the difference between seed potato and the potatoes you buy at the store. Now, of course, you can absolutely plant potatoes from the store that has sprouted. In fact, this year I'm planting, these are some Jersey Royal potatoes I bought at our veg market that have sprouted some beautiful, lovely sprouts on them. Um, and these I'm going to go ahead and plant. But there are some risks in planting potatoes from the store. First up, Seed potatoes are grown specifically for planting on. So they can sometimes be hybrids or um, perhaps um, some sort of rebred potatoes that are specific for growing in the ground and producing a different kind of offspring than their parents were. So that's one thing to consider. You see this a lot with um, like F1 varieties of other vegetables. Now, I don't think I have any F1 varieties of potatoes, but that doesn't mean that the plants aren't specifically chosen to create seed potatoes. Um, also, seed potatoes here in the UK at least are certified for growing on, and what that means is that they've gone through a number of tests, particularly around pests and diseases, to make sure that they are safe to go in the ground from the farm that they grew on to wherever you are. It also means that they won't have any other treatments on them. Um, so sometimes seed potato, or excuse me, sometimes store potatoes may have been bleached or um, in some places irradiated um, or treated in some way for being more shelf stable in the grocery store. Um, and so you may not want to plant that in your ground. However, you can absolutely, a potato is a potato is a potato. Um, so the potatoes that have sprouted from the store will definitely grow. You may not get as many as you would from your seed potatoes. They may not be as reliable, but they can absolutely go in. We tend to buy seed potatoes. Um, we did save potatoes from last year to replant and made it all the way through until April with about, I think it was about uh, six, seven kilos of seed potatoes. And then a bloody chicken got in and decided to peck them apart. Um, so yeah, we had to order some this year. So the potatoes that I'm growing this year are these Jersey Royals from the store. These are gonna go into some buckets, um, which is really my favorite way to grow potatoes. A lot less mess, a lot less fussy. Um, then we also have one of my favorite Scottish heritage varieties. This is a Shetland black potato. So Shetland blacks are one of our favorite potatoes. They are a traditional heritage variety from here in Scotland, or from Shetland, the uh, Shetland Islands up north. And they are a really lovely, um, good variety. They're a more flowery potato. I have to say that here in the UK, 
Um, most potatoes I find tend to be floury um, unless you specifically pick waxy ones. Um, the Shetland Blacks, let's see if I can, the Shetland Blacks have these really lovely purple rings. Um, they make quite lovely chips and things that that color does stay when you cook. Um, and they're a really nice flavored, very mild flavored potato. They grow really well. In fact, they grow so well that we planted some Shetland Blacks here on the farm the first year that we moved here. And every year since, that plot of potatoes still grows. We call it our perennial potato patch. Um, I think I finally killed it all this year, or last year, um, but it, we have had Shetland Black potatoes every single year that we've planted them. So this year, I'm planting those in places where I know it won't matter if they come back um, and it can kind of be a little bit of a looser sort of arrangement. Ideally, I'd plant them all in containers so I knew I was getting every single one of the spuds because that's how they grow back. You break off a bit of the root or the a tiny baby potato, it's left in the ground and it grows again the next year. One of the other potatoes that we're growing this year is called the British Queen potato. Um, it again is a flowery potato. We prefer flowery potatoes. Um, and it is just a really nice mid-season variety of potato. When you look at potatoes, you'll often see that there's earlies, first earlies, main crop, late crop. And what that has to do with is how long from the point in which you plant them to when they are ready. So first earlies have the shortest time from planting to harvesting, and it goes through, obviously, main crop late. We generally don't pick a sort of a variety, um, you know, and, and try to cycle through. We generally don't pick late crop um, or, or, or even main crop. Um, potatoes because our season is so short here um, and we have quite a windy hill and it's a little bit colder than many other places actually very close by we tend to grow a lot of first earlies earlies and then some early main crop beyond that it's probably getting a bit too late for us um, just in terms of our gardening year the British Queen are a mid-season potato and they're supposed to have a great taste I have never eaten them before so I'm really excited um, and they're a nice sort of size we like our potatoes you know not too big not too small so our next potato is called the rose garden um, this is a flowery Irish potato with good resistance to scab and blight now these are gonna go these have white flesh um, these are going to go in an area where we've had some problems with scab. Um, and scab is basically what it says. It's like gross scabby bits on the outside of your potatoes. Um, and we, although we do rotate our potatoes and we put new no-dig mulch on them and do all of the things, we still have some problems in one section of the garden with a scab. So I thought as a trial, I would try some of these Rose Garden potatoes. Um, again, we really try to pick varieties that are native to um, Northern Ireland or Scotland. And we just find that if you pick a variety that is for your climate from a local supplier, you're gonna get much better results. And that's the same true, even if you live somewhere sunny in the South of England, um, you know, you wanna pick varieties that does well for you. Um, and then the last variety that we are planting this year is called a Lady Balfour. Very British names, hey. So the Lady Balfour, um, I just actually should check with Kevin if that's how you pronounce that. Can, can I ask you a question for camera? It's just, I'm not sure how to pronounce this name of this potato. I'm, I'm ask, it's ask a British person. <laughs> no, but it, I was saying it Lady Balfour. Lady Balfour. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I just sometimes, you know, these things are a bit weird. Balfour. Anyway. Okay, excellent, thank you. Anyway, yes, we have confirmation that I was pronounced Balfour <laughs> potatoes. Um, but these are named after um, a pioneer of the organic movement, and they're considered a really good tasting potato um, with a nice creamy flesh. Um, so a creamy flesh will be closer to a sort of waxy than a floury potato, um, but again, nice and neutral potato with lots of uses. Oop. And then of course, we're also planting a sort of half bag of, of Jersey Royals that I got from the veg market. And so all in, we're planting about eight kilos of potatoes, um, which should give us a 
about 200 kilos of potatoes, which is plenty for us. Um, and with events and things, with giving the things away, um, with just some losses, we are covered. So I'm um, hoping to save some for seed potato as well, which is why we've bought a few more this year. In terms of preparing your potatoes for planting, um, generally speaking, you want to put them somewhere um, where they can start to develop eyes. A lot of people will cut their potatoes in half for more yield. Um, I probably won't do that. Um, so we're just gonna drop these in um, and I'm gonna show you some of the ways that we do that. So we are planting potatoes in a few different sections of the garden this year, um, partially because of how we are going to transform some of the soil. Um, potatoes are a really good plant to put in when you are first starting out a garden, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, we're gonna plant some in some containers. I'm gonna plant some in what we call the walled garden or the chicken garden. Um, potatoes generally aren't disturbed by chickens, and um, I've got some spots that I wanna fill up in there. So lots of potatoes go in lots of places. If I had to pick one way, to grow all of my potatoes, it would 100% be in containers. I like the ease of it. I like the mess or relatively mess freeness of it. I like how my potatoes come out in it. I like how manageable it is. Um, I just really love planting potatoes in containers. However, uh, it's a little bit more resource intensive because of course you have to have the containers. Uh, you need some sort of soil. Um, and they need slightly more management, so they need um, a bit more watering and just kind of keeping an eye on. Um, however, I just find it so much easier and so much less effort to plant them in pots. Now the pots that we use are these um, big um, 35 liter plastic tree pots. We bought off of eBay about 10 years ago and we use them every year. We still have them all except for maybe the odd one that I gave to somebody. Um, so although they weren't cheap, I, I can't remember how much they were, um, but we've used them every single year for potatoes and I love it. So what we do is simply put a shovel full of soil in the pot, um, put two potatoes in each pot and then top it up with about two to three inches of soil just to keep the potato covered, give it a little bit of protection from any late frosts. And um, then as they sprout, we'll put more and more soil on them. So what I do is I actually keep all of the pots initially next to our compost. Um, this year, uh, we, we usually do buy in a few ton bags of compost every year for the garden. Um, so this year we bought in two um, from Dale Foot Composts. And they'll just sit here and as we um, so somebody comes past and sees a sprout, all they'll do is they'll just chuck some soil into it. So easy, honestly, love it. And then once they're full, uh, we load them up in the wheelbarrow and we move them somewhere else where I can keep an eye on them um, or they look nice So and out of the way. So sometimes like in the beds or down a row, you know, that kind of thing. So that's some filled up. I've just put some compost on top. Let me see if I can find a potato. There it is. And just tuck it back in. Uh, I'll leave it there um, until it starts to sprout up, give it a bit of a water, and then I'll just keep topping up the compost until the bucket is full. So the other method that we plant potatoes with is just a simple no dig method. Now here I am in the back of our, what we call the wild garden. It was old bullpen uh, and the garden that we have been really gardening with since we moved here. Um, but um, it's pretty much turned into a chicken garden these days. I'm um, just with trying to keep the chickens out of the other garden. Uh, but we still plant some veg in here and potatoes are definitely one because once they're established, the chickens don't really go after them. They don't really dig. And we can always uh, put some barriers around some of the beds so that the chickens don't get into them. Um, the no dig bed is just your basic no dig bed that we've built. Um, so it, has a layer of cardboard many years ago um, and we just topped it up every year with compost or manure. And really the benefit of a no dig method in planting your potatoes is really that you don't have to dig. Um, they 
we're simply, because we have kept that looser soil, soil structure, because we have put soil and compost on the top as opposed to digging it through, the soil isn't compacted. So we really just need to make a small hole for our potatoes, drop it in, and then cover it over. Throughout the growing season, as they sort of build up, what we might do is top it up with a bit of compost, just a shovel or two here or there, or scrape the edges in, um, just kind of mounding them up. But you don't really need to dig a trench because the potatoes will kind of do that for you if you have a good sort of established no-dig bed. I can't remember if I've talked about my Hori Hori knife before, but this is a Japanese trowel and they are amazing. I highly recommend them. Uh, anyway, so what I'm going to do to plant my potato is I'm just going to um, insert my Hori Hori up to pretty much the hilt. Uh, give it a bit of a sugar back and forth. If you want to see how deep that is, is it showing you? There we go. Just give it a sugar, and then I'm just going to drop the potato in. Give it a push down so that the eyes are pointing up, and then I'm just going to cover it over. And that's it. One potato down the rest of the crate to go. The spacing on these potatoes is um, about 12 inches or so. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and plant probably two rows in this bed. The potatoes that I'm planting in this garden are the uh, rose garden potatoes, the ones that are resistant to scab because we've always found that whatever potatoes we plant back here, um, they develop scab in some way, shape, or form. So I'm hoping this variety will solve that. Generally speaking, in a no-dig system, you don't really need to worry too much about um, rotation. Um, so this potato, this bed, excuse me, did have potatoes last year. Um, they were our Christmas potatoes, so I actually just harvested them. Um, and But I have put in more compost, lots of fresh soil, so I'm not really that worried about growing something here again. So another really great tip for starting out potatoes is to make your potato bed your new bed, your new no-dig bed. Because what you can do is you build a no-dig bed and just plant your tomatoes in amongst the layers. And it's a really great way, especially if you're just starting out um, in a bed um, or you have some soil or an area of your garden that you want to turn into beds, potatoes are a great first crop for that. Now there's a couple of ways that you can do it. Um, you can um, do it just like your normal no-dig bed, put a layer of cardboard, put your potatoes on top, mulch them. As they grow, put more and more mulch on them. Um, you could do it a different way, which is put down your mulch and um, plant your potatoes through a layer of like landscaping fabric with holes in it or black plastic, something like that. Um, or you could do a mixture of those methods. So we have a couple beds here in our main garden that are just quite new. There's a lot of compost that's maybe not broken down quite as well as we'd like it. Um, and, you know, it's just not quite the quality of soil that we would want for things like brassicas or anything else. However, it's going to make a really good potato bed because it is quite loose um, straw and things from the bedding from the animals and some compost so actually you could even grow potatoes in straw we've done that before um, although our site now is quite windy so we probably won't be doing that um, here we've had some major problems with the straw bedding back there and chickens getting in but these beds here are going to make a great um, potato bed because it's quite new it's quite fresh and it'll be really easy just to drop my potatoes in